Shalom, sister, shalom. Kohola Yehovah Bahashim, Hamashiach, Wamalaki Abashai. All honor, glory to Yehovah Bahashim, Yahushai. Lord willing, y'all are preparing your mind, your bodies, your spirit for the Day of Atonement, which is tonight sundown for a lot of us sisters. So, Lord willing, y'all have a beautiful Day of Atonement. But this video is touching on being jealous. That jealous spirit. Um, jealousy is a spirit that goes on amongst just women in general, women in the world, sisterhood. The spirit of jealousy is there. It's going to be there, unfortunately, because we're in these carnal bodies. That spirit, sisters may struggle with the spirit of jealousy. And the spirit of jealousy can ruin a lot of relationships. And not only that, that having that spirit of jealousy can ruin um, your walk and hinder your walk and growth in this truth. So let's just jump into it. Um, so I got a couple points being discouraging, always the negative, you know, you could, if you have any of these traits on this, this page right here, you got to examine yourself. You know, you don't want to be that discouraging sister. You know, a sister could say, Hey, you know what? I just applied to get a new job. So now I can be able to, you know, um, uh, buy some new school clothes for my kids and you don't want to be the sister that's like oh well you sure you even want to do that because why can't they just wear the stuff that they had last year why you just don't want to do that or matter of fact you know what just just don't even do it don't even do it don't even do it don't even worry about getting them new school clothes because i have some clothes for y'all and then you don't end up having nothing for them you know you don't want to be that discouraging sister always negative this is romans 2 and 6 who will render to every man according to his deeds so if you're putting out negativity and if you're being a negative sister the lord is going to render to you according to your deeds the lord is a god of knowledge and by him actions are weighed so that's actually very scary so if you want to put out that negative spirit and be negative towards sisters you're going to get the same thing from the lord understand that so you always want to make sure you're being positive hey sis yeah i'm about to go ahead and i think i'm about to i already got this money saved up i got my deposit ready i got my um everything i need to get ready to buy my house i'm real excited for it. it's gonna be bigger the kids the kids gonna love it um my husband get his own man cave you don't want to be that sister like oh you sure you just don't want to rent our apartment for a year and try to save up so you can just stay over here with us because, I don't know, I heard about that area. That area not even really that good. Look, don't nobody want to hear that. Don't nobody want to hear that. You want you want to be positive. An example of being positive is, hey, sis, whatever you need, I'm here. I got you. You need me to watch the kids for the day so y'all can go get everything put in a new house. You need me. What you need? You need me to, you know, help you pack some bags up. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. All right? You want to be a positive sister. You want to uplift sisters. You don't want to bring sisters down and be negative and be discouraging. Okay. All right, let's go back. All right. Number two on the list, gossiping and spreading rumors is actually, I, I cannot stand that spirit, the spirit of gossiping and spreading rumors. And that literally goes right back to Romans two and six. You're, the Lord is going to render you according to your deeds. The Lord is watching everything that you do. So if you gossip and spread in rumors, the Lord is going to bring it to light. All right, but let's get this. This is Ecclesiastes 19 and 8. Whether it be, whether it be to friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives. And if thou canst not, canst re, without offense, reveal them not. So you should never, ever really speak on other men's lives or what other sisters have going on or what a brother might have going on in their household unless it's for a counsel you don't want to be that sister that's like hey shalom like yeah shalom sis you you seen what happened to malak malak house yeah his wife threw a carton of eggs at him but it was in front of shoppers all because she found out that he had a second wife and the second wife yeah, she got three kids, and now she got to take care of him and the three kids because he ain't got no job. You don't want to be that sister. You don't want to be that sister that's talking and being that tailbearer and then just, you know, offending people. 
You don't want to be that sister talking about other men's lives. All right. And this is Proverbs 20 and 19. And you have some sisters that will literally lie on a sister. Some sisters will have that spirit of jealousy on them where a sister may have a good name and they like, look, I want to tarnish this sister. I want to break this sister down. Um, this sister, she thinks she just done a third. I want to, I'm going to break her name. I'm going to try to have a, um, a bad, uh, make a bad report out of her. So you'll have tail bearers as well. And that also goes within being jealous because you're jealous of whatever attributes or whatever the characteristics of that sister, you want to try to break that sister down. And now you want to be a tail bearer. You don't want to be that sister. And like I said before, you don't want to be that sister that reveals secrets. All right. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. So if you around a sister, you get to know a sister, you proving a sister, and she just started running off at the mouth talking about what this brother doing, what this sister doing, what somebody doing in this congregation, they doing this and the third. What's the first thing you should do? Meddle not with them because they talking too much. You don't want to sit there and talk to a sister that's running off at the mouth, being a tail bearer, revealing secrets. You don't want to be that sister that's around that because then that spirit might end up hopping on you. And next thing you know, you're talking about what's going on in Sister um, McCall's house or whatever the case may be. You just don't want to be that sister. But most importantly, you don't want to be a tail bearer. You don't want to be a liar. You're just telling stories. You don't know what you're talking about. And most importantly, like I said before, revealing secrets. And so if you're purposely lying on a sister, that's this that reminds me of Matthew 12 and 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. So every idle word that we say out of our mouth, the Lord has the angels writing that down. In the day of judgment, when it's just between you and the Lord, you're going to have to hold yourself up. He's going to hold you accountable for everything that you said. In this flesh, you might not want to hold yourself accountable. You might not want to be a righteous sister and step up and say, dang, I should have never did that. I should have never said that. No, but the Lord is going to hold you accountable at the end of the day. Every idle word that you say. So if you lying, the Lord is going to hold you accountable for that. And you're going to get judged for that. So you don't want to be a liar. And let's get... Let's get Proverbs 19 and 5. A false witness shall not go unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You don't want to be that sister lying on sisters, saying you saw something or saying you a sister did something and she never do it. You shall not go unpunished. You shall not go unpunished. If I were to be a false witness and a liar, then I shall not go unpunished. The Lord is going to punish me just like he's going to punish all of us. If we're being a false witness and if we speak in lies, we're not going to escape the judgment of the Lord at the end of the day. And that's very scary. That's something to meditate on, you know, going into the day of um, atonement. You don't want to be that sister. Check yourself and ask yourself, making sure you're not being a tailbearer, Ma making sure you're not um, speaking lies, making sure you're not being a false witness. And this is Luke 12, 2 and 3. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall, that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear and closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. So everything that you say, it's going to come to it's going to come to light. Every single thing that we say and do, it's going to come to come to light. Good works and bad works. So if you if you lying on a sister and being a tail bearer, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. The Lord is going to have everything come out, come to the light. Even if you saying it, you could be whispering it to somebody. The Lord still going to have it come out. You might think that somebody will never tell a lie that you might have told but it's still going to come out like the lord said right moving on to the humiliating a sister in front of others um 
this is actually very off everything on this these check marks is very off but you don't want to be the sister that's humiliating you don't want to be that sister that's humiliating a sister in front of others if let's say i'm going to use this as an example um the sister hair wrap could have accidentally came off and she might have a matted down afro she might have a matted down afro her hair wrap came off but she don't know she about to go walk to the bathroom and you see it come off but you don't say nothing you just don't say nothing when she come back in the room or you come out in front of everybody and say, hey, girl, you forgot your hair, bro. Look at your hair. Your hair all matted down, looking like a real little pad. What's wrong with you? Then everybody laughing. You humiliating that sister in front of everybody. A sister could have a secret fault and come to you and say, hey, I've been struggling with this down the third. Yeah, everybody, such and such, sister so-and-so, she told me she was struggling with the spirit of um, not being content. And she's saying she's jealous of this other sister, this down the third yard. This is ridiculous. Like, we're supposed to be in the truth. And she's talking about some she jealous uh, of this sister. And she con she don't know how to be content with the things that the Lord gave her. That's humiliating a sister in front of others. And you want to treat sisters how you would want to be treated. And that's Matthew 20, 22 and 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yahweh I said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So you, so you shall always treat sisters the way you will want to be treated. So if you got something going on, if your hair wrap fall off, you will want somebody to be like, hey girl, here, come put your hair back on. Let me put your hair wrap back on for you. If you um, see a sister and she's doing good, you're going to say, oh, Shalom, sis, congratulations. I'm so happy for you because you will want somebody to do the same for you. If you see a sister, um, uh, you know, just had a baby or is pregnant, oh, Shalom, sis, congratulations. You, because that's what you will want in return. You will want to treat people the way that you will want to be treated. Okay. All right. Number four, purposely giving wrong counsel. And this happens a lot of times. Sisters will give somebody the wrong counsel because they're jealous of that sister. And that is Ecclesiastes 37 and 11. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. Neither with a coward in matters of war, nor with a merchant concerning exchange, nor with a buyer of selling, nor with an envious man of thankfulness, nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness, nor with the slothful for any work, nor with a hireling for a year of finishing work, nor with an idle servant of much business, hearken not unto any so like you hearken not unto these in any manner of counsel. So you don't want to hearken to a sister that you feel like she might be jealous of. You know, we all got the spirit of discernment. Everybody has the spirit of discernment, but you don't want to have an evil suspicion. But if you know that a sister is jealous of you, don't go to that sister and say, hey, sis, I got this going on and expect a congratulations. Don't go to the sister asking her for advice for anything, thinking that you're going to get any helpful advice. You could you could be going to a sister think, you know, you could have a sister that's your friend. Y'all been friends, friends for 10 years. Y'all been friends for 10 years. But, you know, deep down in your heart that the sister is envious of you. But you kind of ignoring it because oh, we've been friends for 10 years. You know, this is my sister. I love her. You know, Lord willing, she, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. You know, sisters might think like that. But then you go to that sister wanting to seek an advice. Say you're going through some marriage problems. You go to that sister for marriage problems and you know that she's already envious of you. And you might go to her and tell her, hey, sis, you know what? My husband, um, I'm trying to think of a scenario. Let's say my husband, uh, yeah, I got to be quicker. I got to be quick on my feet. Um, let's say a sister's like, hey, sis, my, my husband, you know what? He, his phone is always locked. His phone is always locked. I don't know what he be doing, who he be texting, da, 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 da. Now, she could give you the wrong advice and say, sis, when he go to sleep at night, 
you need to go through his phone and see what he's doing unlock his phone and, and he's probably talking to the sister he's probably doing this he's probably sneaking around sis you need to go through his phone because why is his phone locked what is he hiding from you sis that's the type of counsel that a jealous sister would give you a righteous sister would say you know what sis why don't you talk to your husband about it say you know even if you got to write him a letter or talk to him say shalom um you know i really don't i'm trying to figure out you know you know why is your phone locked all of a sudden and then go from there just ask him just ask him about it but you don't want to be you know sneaky and lie and then now you your whole world turned upside down because you done got counsel from a sister that's jealous of you so you know that's something to think about Philippians 2 and 3, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And this Philippians 2 and 3 goes into competitive, the need to upstage someone. Now, no one should ever feel the need to be competitive with a sister. Because at the end of the day, we all trying to do what we all trying to get the kingdom of heaven. We're all trying to put our brick in. So we can literally build this, build our, this, um, build the temple up so the hopeful elect can get sealed. We raising our children up righteously. We being a helpmate. We doing all the things that we got to do through the spirit and power. You have about Shimei Al Shai so the elect can be sealed so we can get up out of this captivity. That's our main purpose in this truth. Everything else is carnal and everything else is vanity. You should never have to never want to be competitive with another sister. Oh, but well, this sister, she did this and a third. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Well, I want to do the same thing. Oh, this sister did this. Now I'm going to do it better. Oh, she did this. I'm going to do it better. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it way better than I'm going to do it better than her. Oh, she did oh, this sister. She came to the congregation with uh, um, she came to the congregation with a uh, jerk lamb. Shoot. Well, shoot, next feast day, I'm coming to the um, I'm coming to the feast day with jerk lamb, jerk chicken, and lamb gravy. So now your mind is bugged out. You so worried about what another sister doing, you gotta worry about yourself. You it's no need to be competitive or the need to upstage another sister. Ultimately, that shows insecurities. And you, if you feel like you have insecurities within yourself where you feel like you need to upstage a sister or you need to be competitive towards your fellow sister, then you need to ask the Lord to heal your spirit because your mind isn't right. You have a spirit on you of jealousy and you have a spirit of covetousness. And that's Ecclesiasticus 10 and 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not much more thing than a covetous man. For such a one selleth his soul, his own soul to sell. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. There is nothing worse than a covetous sister. Because you don't know what you're going to do. You, don't, you might have a sister around you that's covetous. And, she, you know, I used this example in the other video that I had. Um, did about jealousy. The example was a sister... Um, this actually happened to somebody. It was two Eves, two um, so-called black women. They was in the world. Her friend was jealous of her, of her, um, the friend was jealous of her other friend because she was pregnant and she was about to have a baby. So every night in her mind, she was probably thinking about and being upset and jealous and envious of this sister for having a baby to the point where the spirit of murder hopped on her. The spirit of murder hopped on her and she took that baby out of her own sister because she was covetous. That's why it says there's nothing worse to, than a covetous man. There's nothing worse than a covetous sister because Lord knows what you would do to get whatever it is that that sister needs. Whether it is you're going to sell out, you could sell your body. You could sell out anything. There's nothing worse than a cover. You end up not being in the truth, being covetous. Because you're so worried about what somebody else got and you want to have that so bad instead of being content. There's nothing more than, yeah, so like it, there's not a more wicked thing. There's nothing more wicked than being covetous. That's off. 
that's a very off spirit that you have to ask the Lord to take the spirit off of you. Because ultimately, being competitive and the need to upstage your sister, that's that's that goes into being covetous. You want what the other sister got. You want to upstage what the other sister got. The Lord is not dealing with that. He's not dealing with that. All right? Envyings. So like you envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revilings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. So if you have that spirit of envying on you, you are not going to get the kingdom of heaven, point blank, period. Straight like that. That's what the word of the Lord says. So you really got to ask the most high to take that spirit off you, especially we going right into the day of atonement. So if you feel like you have that spirit of envying on you or that drunkenness spirit, or whatever spirit you got on you, ask the Lord to take that spirit off of you. OK. All right. So you don't want to have that competitive spirit to upstage one. All right. Moving on. OK. Celebrating another sister's failures. <sighs> Y'all, this, I was telling my sister that I was going to do this video, and I was telling her, I was like, this is kind of sad. And she's like, no, it's not sad because this is real life. And I said, you right, but at the same time, it's sad. You know, I know a lot of us, we don't want to be in this flesh. We don't want to deal with these demons, but these are spirits that sisters may have on them. If not this spirit of being um, envious, you might have another whole type of demon on you. But I just hate the fact that we have to go through these things. But, you know, the Lord sees fit for us to to go through the spiritual warfare for a reason. All right. Gold is tried in a fire and acceptable men through the furnace of adversity. So, you know, if you if you struggling with this spirit, please ask the Lord to take that spirit off of you. OK, but celebrating another sister's failures is a completely off. Like if you celebrating the fact that a sister um, and her husband separated or a sister lost her house or a sister lost her car or a sister came in and broke her toe while she was wearing some heels or a sister came in and she, you know, or if a sister lose her hair, whatever the case may be, if you're celebrating that sister failure, that's very extremely off. And you need to ask the Lord to put the spirit on you to repent from that. Okay. This is Proverbs 24, 17 and 18. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. Least the Lord see it and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. So you should never rejoice when you see a sister fall. And you shouldn't be glad when she is stumbling or she, the Lord gives her obstacles, trials and tribulations to go through because the Lord is going to see that and it's going to displease him. And he's going to turn away that wrath from whatever that sister's going through. And he's going to blow it right in front of your face and give it to you. Now you got to deal with the same thing that you was just rejoicing the other sister going through. So rejoice not when your sister falls. That goes back into Matthew 22, um, 36 and 39. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So you want to love your sister like you love yourself. If you see your sister going through a hard time and your sister may have um, lost her car, she can't make it to the Sabbath service, or what you going to do? Sit there and say, that's what she get. She get on my nerves anyway. Now she can't come to the Sabbath service and try to think she all that in front of everybody. No, that's what a wicked sister would think. A righteous sister would be like, hey, Shalom says, I'm sorry that that happened to you. We can throw up a prayer. We can fast over it. And I can pick you up every every Sabbath day until you're able to get your car out to shop or whatever, whatever it is. I'm here for you. If you need me, I'm here. All right. Never celebrate another sister failures because the Lord is going to render you according to your deeds. You're going to get that same work back. And I also want to bring out going back to being competitive and the need to upstage sisters. That brings me to um, um, Philippians two and three. Let nothing be done through strife 
or vainglory, but in lowliness it's also of mind, glory let as each well. esteem others better than themselves. So if you are doing stuff to be competitive, that's causing strife. And that can also court, cause discord. And that leads me to um, James 3 and 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. So that envying and that, it brings strife and it brings an evil spirit that can lead to something off happening. This is Matthew 5 and 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So you're going to have sisters that's going to persecute you. All right, you're going to have sisters that persecute you. You're going to have enemies. You can have a sister that's your enemy in this truth. You may not get along. You may not like that sister for whatever reason. As long as it's not out of being jealous of that sister. You might not like that sister because she is slothful or because she is a talebearer or because the sister um, don't like to take correction. Whatever the situation is, you're going to have enemies. You can have an enemy and it's true. But the Lord says, bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you and pray for them, which despitefully use you and persecute you. So at the end of the day, I always be having this in my mind. It's better to pray for someone than rather than to talk about them. Like it's better to just throw up a prayer. Say, you know what? If you feeling like you want to talk about a sister, be like, you know what? Let me just throw up a prayer for this sister. Let me throw up a prayer and ask the Lord to put whatever it is type of spirit that you feel like she might lack. Okay, that's showing love is by praying for that sister. But not talking about the sister, gossiping about her, making a whole scene about the sister. You know, we're going into the Day of Atonement. We have to start praying for each other more than we're talking. And that goes into being a mummering and backbiting and sowing discord spirit. Oh, my goodness. I just can't stand the spirit. That sowing discord, that mummering, that backbiting, it's just terrible. I don't know if I brought this up, but we're going to bring it out again. This is Proverbs 6 and 16 through 19. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, sisters being the liars. The Lord hates that. Hands that shed innocent blood. Mm. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift into running to mischief. Mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. The Lord hates all of that, and especially that heart, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. That goes into being a gossiper and spreading rumors. And it also goes into purposely giving wrong counsel, because you want something um, bad to happen to that sister. If you want something bad to happen to a sister, then I don't know what to tell you besides repent. That's all I can think of because I'm thinking about this is just so off. A heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift into running into mischief. Now you run into mischief. You you here and there. You all everywhere. Just trying to be in everybody's business. So in discord. Doing just all manner of wickedness and evilness. And you lying on top of that. And now you're so in discord amongst brethren. The Lord hates that. These are all the things that the Lord hates, and these are all abominations unto the Lord. And ultimately, a lot of these things happen because sisters are envious or sisters. Yes, yeah, sisters are envious. Sisters have that spirit of jealousy. You don't want to be that sister. You don't want to do these things that the Lord hates. You just don't want to do that. This is Proverbs 27 and 4. Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who will be able to stand before envy? So if you got that envy spirit on you, please ask the Lord to take that spirit off of you. All right. And touching more with the mummering spirit, that kind of reminds me of Miriam. We all know what happened to Miriam. She got jacked up. She got jacked up real bad for mummering. This is Numbers chapter 12. All right. 
and Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who had who had who he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. So they was like, you know, Miriam, it was almost kind of like a jealousy spirit because they like the mo the Lord not only dealing with you, Moses, he dealing with us too. Like he what about us? He dealing with us too. And what did the Lord do? And the Lord spake subtly into Moses and into Aaron and into Miriam. And he said, All y'all come here. He said, Come out ye three into the tabernacle of the congregation. And they all came out. And the Lord came down the pillar of the crowd in the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. He said, my, my servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we can start at nine. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed. So that made the Lord angry because it was like a mummering spirit. It was almost like an envying spirit that Miriam had towards Moses because she's like, well, the Lord is dealing with us too. And the cloud departed from off of the tabernacle and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked up, looked upon Miriam and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. So even Moses cried, that just shows you how meek uh, Moses was he was like oh my gosh this is my sister you know please forgive her Lord please forgive her but that's how you know we should be towards one another forgiving and loving like Moses but the point that I want to bring out is that the Lord judged Miriam he didn't judge Aaron you know he judged Miriam we're going to get judged harshly for a lot of the things that we say and a lot of the things we do and that's why we have this account right here to show for an example, everything was written a fourth time for our learning. So this is an example right here. And Miriam had that backbiting spirit. And it's like, and the Lord even had to say, he said, my servant Moses is not so. And you don't know who's back on the earth. You don't know what type of sister you're envying back on the earth or the sister that you're lying about or the sister that you're coveting after or the sister that you secretly hate or the sister that you, you know, lying and um, so in discord, you don't know what type of sister that sister may be back in the spirit. If you have that understanding. And you don't want it. You don't want it to come out that you could be possibly starting some mess and lying and envying on a sister. That's Judith or a sister that could be um, uh, um, Tabitha, a sister that could be Esther. You know, you don't want you don't want that to be um, you don't want that to be your judgment. You know, you don't want to be that sister. So you have to be mindful and use wisdom and treat everybody like how you would treat yourself, because the Lord could the Lord is going to judge all of us according to our works. But the Lord has certain people set up. And if that person or if that sister, you may think this sister is nothing. You might think she ain't nothing. She just came to the truth. She ain't nobody. But that sister could be somebody really righteous back on the earth. So we should all treat each other the way we would want to be treated. And you should never mummer and have that mummering spirit and you end up getting judged. And that also leads me to McCall and David. This is um, 2 Samuel chapter 6. All right, we know the account. That's when David, I'm not going to read the whole thing because I won't make it too long. But, you know, David was dancing before the Lord and he was girded up in his linen ephod. All right. And he was David was having a good time. He was rejoicing. He was rejoicing. He was having a good time turning up, you know, for the Lord. Then David, I just want to start at 20. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michael, the daughter, Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants. As one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. So she's like, yo, David, you don't got no clothes on. What are you doing? Like, you really think you're doing something, but you're not doing anything. She she was kind of going on David. But David is like, hold on, wait a minute. It was before the Lord. 
which choose me before thy father. He And David kind of got smart with her. He said, but I'm dancing before the Lord who chose me before your I was about to say something before your before your daddy, Mike, Michael. He said, what are you talking about? He said, and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord of Israel. He said, therefore, I will play before the Lord. He's like, get, therefore, get out of my face, girl. I'm going to dance for the Lord. I'm going to have my instruments. We're going to turn about a good time. You coming at me with all of this. She was being Satan. You coming at me. But the Lord chose me to be king over Israel. Verse 22. And I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be base in my own sight. And of thy maidservants, which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I shall I be had in honor. Therefore, Micah, Michael, if I'm saying her name right, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children until the day of her death. Oh my gosh. So she couldn't, she didn't couldn't even, the Lord cursed her womb because she spoke up against David, because she had that mummering spirit. How much more so, what makes sisters think that that's not going to happen to us in these later, latter times? You could be mummering against somebody, a brother that's mighty in the truth, or mummering against a sister or jealous, because sisters be jealous of brothers too, just like this situation. You could be jealous of a brother or jealous of a sister. The Lord is going to judge you because you don't know who you really, who you really being jealous of or who you really mummering against. So you have to be mindful of those things and not have that mummering spirit. You don't want to have that spirit of being that backbiting, sowing discord. All right. Always being discouraging, negative. You ain't going to get that job, sis. What you only got? You ain't even graduated high school. They not even going to hire you. You don't want to be that sister. You don't want to be that gossiping sister. Oh, yeah. You heard about what such and such did. Yeah, she. Mm, yeah, she had it again. Acting a fool, throwing eggs at her husband, not cleaning up. She, she said she's not doing nothing. Mm-hmm. You heard about that? Humiliating the sister. Sister could be on her flower. You not you don't even tell her. Walking, she walking around with blood on her skirt. Ugh, girl. You over there looking all nasty with your little stank booty. Look at her, everybody. She gonna come out knowing she unclean. And everybody like, dang. You don't want to be that sister humiliating sister. Purposely give it raw counsel. Yeah, girl, you need to go and get job to turn up on all of them. Matter of fact, go bring your gun, wave it around, pistol whip your manager and tell her that if she wants to see you with the hands, come outside right now. She can see you with the hands. All right, you don't want to be that sister purposely giving raw counsel. Competitive. Well, I'm going to outdo this sister. Well, she did this. Well, I'm going to do this now. Mm, that makes me feel good about myself. You don't want to be that sister. Celebrate another sister's failure. All praises to the most high. I'm so glad she lost her car because she always trying to make it there before me. She always trying to set stuff up before me. Thank goodness. Now everybody can look at me. Like what in the world? Mummering and backbiting. Yeah, he said that he only, he only want us to do this then a third or she only want us to do this then a third to set the tables up like this but i don't know i she just doing that or he like no the lord isn't dealing with none of these characteristics none of these characteristics the lord not dealing with so if you're dealing with any of these spirits you have to ask the lord to purge those spirits out of you and let's go back to the original ecclesiasticus 26 and 6 but a grief of heart and a sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. So if you have that spirit of jealousy, I ultimately feel bad for sisters because obviously there's something that's going on within your spirit because you're sorrowful. Like you you have a sorrowful spirit on you that you, you're jealous and you can't be happy for somebody else. That means you're not being content and grateful and happy for the things that the Lord has given you in your life that someone else doesn't even have. Somebody's wishing that they have the things that you have, but you might be coveting, covetous and jealous over what another woman got. You have to be grateful and content for whatever it is that the Lord gives you. And a grief of heart, a grief of your mind, your mind is just sad. It's sad, ultimately, if you have that spirit. And I don't want to be, you know, I'm not trying to be all hardcore on sisters, but it's really sad, sisters. And if you have that spirit, you know, I feel bad with any other, you know, 
I say that more than anything because it literally says that, you know, it's nothing more worse than a covetous man. It's nothing more worse, worse than a covetous sister. When you covet after things, you're, you, that, that goes into jealousy, being envious. You don't want to have that spirit on you. All right. This is Proverbs 23 and 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he, unto thee, to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So, you know, what you think in your mind, you know, that's what you are. You don't want to be a jealous sister. You don't want that to be your characteristic. You don't want to be that envious sister where you're discouraging, where you're a backbiter, you're a mummer, you're so in discord, you hate your sister. You give him um, uh, all types of wrong advice. You can't be happy. You don't want to be that sister. Because if you think in these things, that's who you are. You don't want to be that sister. Because ultimately, like the scripture said, that's sad. That's a that's a that's a sadness of your mind for you to think like that. And this is the last account I want to bring out. This is Matthew 27, um, 17 through 18. <sighs> yeah, this is sad. This is heavy because envy is what got Yahweh put to death. All right. Therefore, when they gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto? So lucky. Therefore, when they gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barbas or Yahawashai, which is called Hamashiach Yahawashai. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. So they, everybody knew that for envy that they delivered Yahawashai on the cross to be killed. They saw what Yahweh was doing. They saw Yahweh was putting in the work, mir uh, healing people, doing miracles. People was mad because they couldn't do that. Instead of being like, dang, all praises to the Most High. I'm happy for this brother. Look, the Lord sent the Son of God. No, but people was jealous to the point where they put our Lord Yahweh on a cross. There's nothing much more worse and more wicked than a covetous man. Than a covetous sister. That covetous sister will be the type of sister that will have you delivered up in the last days. And if you want that on your spirit, or you going, Lord willing, it don't happen, but that could happen. You could have a spirit of envy on you so bad that you end up delivering up your own sister. And then you're going to get put to death. Or the Lord going to have you hang yourself. Or something crazy happened to you. Like with Judas. It's scary. So sisters, if you got that spirit on you, get that spirit off of you. That's why we're going into the Day of Atonement. We're going to fast and we're going to pray. We're going to ask the Most High to remove any wicked spirits that we may have on us so that we're able to be counted blameless on the Day of the Lord. And with that being said, sisters, that's all I want to bring out. Hamashiach. <laughs> Wamalaki Yahweh Shai, all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Keep enduring, sisters. Keep holding down through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Shalom.